so hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and in this video i will be solving problem c that is elemental decompress from round 842 also i will make a video on problem d i will work on it in the evening so you can expect a video uh, at night right so i will make a video on problem d as well as for my thoughts on this problem i think like this was a really bad problem it was like basically all implementation and like nothing much behind it so let's move on to the problem and see how we can solve this but before we move on to the solution i want to tell you guys about newton schools coding contest as you guys know newton schools does this coding contest every month and this month the name of the contest is code rush x and the prizes are better than ever before so you can win prizes up to rupees 10 lakhs and along with this you can win placement opportunities in top product companies so like if you guys want to play this for fun or you guys want to play this for placements that is totally up to you uh, the contest will be on 28th of january uh, it will start around 9 pm and the contest will be 3 hours long so there will be ample amount of time for you guys to brainstorm and solve good quality problems so if you guys want to benchmark yourself or just win some placements this is a very good opportunity i will leave a link to this contest in the comments and in the description so you guys can go and sign up from there and show or you can flex how good you are at problem solving so now let's move on to the solution so in the problem we have been given an array a of size n right where n can be up to 10 to the power 5 so something like a1 a2 a3 so on up to an right and we have been asked to find two permutations p and q such that we have p1 p2 p3 so on up to pn and similarly we have q1 q2 q3 so on up to qn then for these two permutations the following condition must hold right your any element ai should be equal to maximum of pi comma qi right the following condition must hold so we have to answer in either yes or no if we can find two such permutations p and q and if the answer is yes we also have to print the permutations otherwise report that the answer is no so let's see how we can solve this right so in this problem you just had to do a greedy implementation right i have no proof why the greedy thing works but it just works right that's why i think the problem was really dumb you just had to write the greedy implementation and for some reason it worked right so there was not so much thought process involved behind the problem but still i will go over my implementation and show you how you guys can implement this so let's take some example and try to solve it right so let's say you have your array a as equal to 5 4 3 1 and 5 right so this is your array a now you have to find some two permutations p and q initially let's say they are empty right so something like this so i will keep uh, two sets i will keep a set p this will tell me the elements that i have still to place right initially i have not placed any element so i can place all the elements right so i can say all the elements are yet to be placed so i have 1 2 3 4 5 initially in set p then i have set q similarly set q will also be full right so what i will do is i will do two pass on array a right what it means is i will iterate two times over array a so let's iterate over array a for the first time right for the first time i will go from the left side and i will iterate over array a so i will go from the left side now i see a 5 right so first i will try to place 5 in array p or or in permutation p right you can see that my permutation p is empty and i don't see 5 anywhere so i can remove this x and i can place this 5 here now i can remove this 5 from set p right because i have placed 5 so i cannot place 5 anymore so i can remove 5 from my set p similarly i move on to 4 I don't see four anywhere in permutation p, so I can remove this, and I can place a four here. Now I have placed four, so I can also remove four from my set p. Now I move on to three. I don't see three anywhere in my permutation p, so I can like also place three here, and remove this from my permutation, or from my set, right? Similarly, I move on to one, and I don't see one anywhere, right? So I can place one here as well. and i can remove one from my set 
now i move on to 5 right so now if i try to place 5 here you can see that i have already placed 5 so i cannot place 5 here so i have to place 5 in my permutation queue right so i will remove this from here and place 5 here now i have placed 5 in queue so i can remove 5 uh, i can move 5 from my set queue right so after first pass my permutation p and q will look something like this and my set p and q will look something like this for example if we had some more 5 here let's say we have another 5 here right so now if you try to iterate over this 5 you can see that i also have a 5 in my array p or in my permutation p and i also have a 5 in my uh, permutation q so i cannot place this extra 5 right so in this case you can just print your answer as no right so if you try to place an element and it has been placed in both permutations p and in both permutations q then in that case you can just print out a no right but in this case we don't have this extra 5 so we will not print no so your permutation will look something like this after your first pass right so like every index has a placed element and every index has a uh, like unplaced element right for for like for the first index we have placed 5 but the index in q is empty similarly for the last index right index in like p is unplaced but index in q has been placed so this is the configuration that you will see after like iterating your array for the first time now we will iterate through the array for the second time and try to place these unplaced elements right so let's rewrite this entire thing and see how we can apply the second iteration right so we we'll get our array a as 5 4 3 1 and 5 we get our permutation p as 5 4 3 1 and something and our permutation q as something 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 and then a 5 my set p only contains 2 and my set q contains 1 2 3 and 4 so we'll do a second iteration now i have to place the value of x right so how can i do that so i know that my maximum of x comma 5 right max of this comma this is to is equal to this right so my max of x comma 5 has to be equal to 5 right so my x is less than equal to 5. So now I can place any value here that is less than equal to 5. But what I will do is I will greedily place. I will greedily place the largest value of x. Right. So I will greedily place the largest value of x which is less than equal to 5. Right. And I will place it here. Now how can I find the largest value of x that is less than equal to 5. Right. So to do that I can use my set q. Right. So I will query my set Q for the largest value X, which is less than or equal to five. And in this case, such a value is four. So I can remove four from here, right? right and I can place it here, right? So now this contains four. Similarly, now I move on to four, right? So now, now I have to find the largest element, which is less than or equal to four. And in this case, it is equal to three. So I can remove this and place 3 here similarly i move on to 3 now so answer in this case will be 2 so i will remove 2 from here and place 2 here now i move on to 1 and for 1 the answer is 1 so i will like pop 1 and place 1 here then i will move on to this now now i have to place something in permutation p right so similarly, I have to find the value x, which is less than or equal to 5, the largest value x, which is less than or equal to 5, that can be placed in p. And in this case, like set p only contains 2, so I will pop out uh, 2 and I will place it here, right? So 2 goes here. So now, now you know your permutations p and q both, right? So this is your permutation p and this is your permutation q, right? And this will be your answer. So that's how you can like solve the problem in two iterations. But like there can be some issues in the second iteration as well. For example, let's say your array A is equal to 5, 4, 3, uh, not 5, 4, 3. Let's say your array is equal to 5, 4 and uh, 1, 1, 5, right? Something like this. So your permutation P after first pass will be 5, 4, 1, something, something. Your permutation Q will be something, something, something and 1, 5, right? And your set P will contain 2, 3 and your set Q will contain uh, 2, 3 and 4, right? So we start from the left 
so we have 5 and x so i can pop out 4 right the largest element which is less than or equal to 5 so i will pop out 4 and i will place it here then for 4 i can pop out 3 so i will pop out 3 and place it here then for 1 right so like if you see now there is no element in set q which is like less than 1 right so in this case like when you query the set when you query the set you will get nothing right you will get no answer so in this case answer is equal to false or you can say the answer is no right you cannot find two such permutations p and q in this case right so that will be the impossible case for second iteration so for first iteration like you can check if your element is present p and q both if it is the answer is no in that case and in second iteration you can check like if your like set if your set returns an empty element then in that case your answer is no right so that will be the impossible cases for both the iterations. Otherwise the answer is yes. And you can print out your permutations P and Q after doing both the iterations. So let's write some pseudo code for this. So you guys can like get a clear picture how you can implement this. So you can keep two sets, set P and set Q. They will contain all the elements from one, two, three, so on up to N. One, two, three, so on up to N, right? Then we'll do the first iteration. Right, so for i goes from 1 to n, check if a of i is placed, check if a of i is placed in p, right? If it is not, if it's not, remove a i from set p and place it, right? Otherwise, if it is, if it is placed, then check if it is, then we check for Q, then check if AI is placed in Q or not, if AI is placed in Q or not. If it is not, if it's not, then place it in Q and remove AI from set Q and remove AI from set q and if it is also placed in set q then in that case the answer is impossible right and if it is also placed in set q then the answer is no right that means we have placed ai both in p and q but still there is some ai which needs to be placed and in that case it cannot be placed so the answer is no so that will be the first iteration now for the second iteration for i goes from 1 to n right check right uh, like check like which permutation you want to place the element in right check if p needs to be placed right if p needs to be placed you can query set p for the largest element x which is less than or equal to ai right query set p which is less than or equal to ai and like if you get the element you can place it if you get the element place it otherwise if the element is empty then the answer is no right if the query like gives something empty then the answer is no similarly check if q needs to be placed in that case query your set q x less than is equal to ai if you get the element, place it. Otherwise, if the like if the result is empty, then the answer is no. Right? So that will be the entire pseudo code. So in the end, you can just print out your permutations P and Q. And if you want to see the code for this, uh, here is the code. I will just show my show my submission. Right. So here is the code. So I keep uh, answer P, answer Q, this will store my permutation answers. I will keep two sets, P and Q, this will like store my sets. Then I will do the first iteration. I will check like if my VI has been placed in P or not. If like my VFI has not been placed in P, then I will place it in P. I will set my answer and I will remove the element from the set, right? Similarly, I will check if my element has been placed in Q or not. If it has not been placed in Q, I will place it in Q. 
and I will add it to the answer and I will remove it from the set Q. Otherwise, if, if the element has been placed both in P and Q, then the answer is impossible, right? So in that case, I will just return false. So that is the entire first iteration. Then I move on to the second iteration, right? So I will again do the iteration from left to right and I will check if my like if my element needs to be placed in Q. That is if my uh, V of phi has been placed in P, right? So what I'm doing here is, let me go to the example, right? So here I am checking if my P has been filled or not, right? If my P has been filled, that means I need to like insert the element into Q, right? So I am checking. So I'm checking if my element has been filled in P, if my element has been filled in P, then my Q needs to be filled. So I will do a query on my set Q and I will find the largest element, which is less than or equal to VI, right? So that's what I'm doing here. But like, if I don't find such an element, if I don't find such an element, then the answer is false. So I will return false. So like, if I find such an element, I will insert it into my answer and I will remove it from my set Q. Then I will do the same thing for Q. Like if my Q has been filled, then it means my P is empty. So I need to fill my P. So I will click query on set P and find the largest element, which is less than or equal to VI. If I find such an element, I will insert it into my answer and remove it from set P. Otherwise, I will return answer as false, right? That means I was not able to find any element to place here. So after doing both the iterations, if the answer is not false, that means you have found some permutations. So you can just print out yes, and you can just print out the permutations P and Q, right? So that is the entire solution. And if you guys have some doubts, feel free to ask in the comments or join my Discord server. I'll be more than happy to answer doubts there. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.